Hey, welcome to another session of Sing and Cook at Sanjeev Kapoor's Khazana. And today I'm going to show you a simple, quick and easy biryani. The moment you hear biryani, it's like a fright. Recently, I was in Qatar and there I found a group of ladies. The moment I said that I'm going to show you biryani, it was like a fright to them. Why? Because everybody thinks that there's a big list of ingredients required and it's a very complicated procedure. Today, I'm going to simplify that for you. It is said that biryanis were invented by the Mughals, you know, because whenever they used to travel across, their soldiers and everybody after a war required some meals, which was a full meal in itself with chicken and rice and everything. So there the biryanis were invented by the cooks of those Mughal emperors. Chicken, rice cooked together. Probably previously, it was more mutton biryani than the chicken biryani. However, when it traveled to our country, there was invention of mutton biryani, chicken biryani, veg biryani, and you name the dish. Today, a simple chicken biryani. What have I got here for you? This is water kept for a boil. Now, in this water, I'm going to cook this rice. One of the most important thing for a biryani, it is said, is good quality rice. And we're very fortunate in India to have great quality of basmati rice. So I've got basmati rice soaked for about 20 minutes here. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to take a piece of cheese cloth or a muslin cloth, tear this up into a small piece. This is a piece of muslin cloth. Now these ingredients, the black cardamom, green cardamom, cloves, pepper, bay leaf and cinnamon stick. They all go in and I am and I am going to make a bag of this. Twist it up, tie it up so that I get only the flavor. Now, this goes into the water that I am boiling. To this, I am going to add shahi jeera, caraway seeds, a teaspoon full of shahi jeera into the water. Salt. While the water comes to a boil, let me marinate the chicken also. Now, I have got chicken, one full chicken here, cut into pieces on the bone. I always like chicken biryani or any biryani for that matter with chicken or mutton on bone actually because you get a nice stock feel once the chicken is getting cooked you get a stock created from the chicken itself so you need not worry about adding stock externally and this is why most of us here back in India we prefer chicken biryani or mutton biryani with the meat on bone now here's the chicken biryani chicken in add the ginger garlic paste Red chilli powder, salt to taste, yogurt, garam masala powder, the green cardamom powder, brown onions and some ghee which is melted. This is one of those secret ingredients of a good biryani. In India, biryanis are mostly made in Lucknow or Hyderabad. They would not make a biryani if there is no ghee. That's what one of the flavors that come when you make a biryani. It's nice. It imparts a good aroma to a biryani. Now to this, I will add some freshly chopped coriander, mint leaves, two green chilies broken up and mix this whole thing up with the chicken. The chicken here is nicely massaged 
with the mixture of yogurt and all the good things that I've added in it. Now to this marinade, we also need to add a bit of turmeric, juice of one lime and mix the chicken thoroughly. Leave this chicken to rest for about half an hour so that it nicely gets marinated into all the spices that we have added. The water here has almost come to a boil now. Let me add the soaked rice. Keep stirring the rice so that it gets uniformly cooked. Here we have to cook the rice only until 3 fourths done, not more than that. Because if you cook more than that, the rice will become like, you know, a khichdi, it'll mash. So you need to be very careful about cooking the rice. It should be just about three fourth done. It's plain and simple, isn't it? The chicken and the rice. You don't have to cook the chicken first and boil the rice separately. It's all complicated. I'm just simplifying the procedure for you to make a biryani. Plain and simple. The rice now is three-fourth boiled. You can feel the rice, which is like almost crumbling now. It's three-fourth boiled. So what am I going to do? Now I'm going to layer the rice on the chicken. I'll also allow a little bit of water to come along with the rice so that the biryani remains nice and moist. To this, sprinkle a little coriander, mint leaves, brown onions, garam masala powder, green cardamom powder and now layer the rest of the rice on top of this. Let me strain the balanced rice in a colander. The rice I've strained in a colander, out goes this small little piece of spices that I've kept in this. This goes out, you would call it a bouquet garni, yeah? And layer the rest of the rice uniformly. And now, some more flavors that will go in, some brown onions. Adds to the sweetness of the biryani. Once again, some garam masala. Some cardamom powder and saffron soaked in milk. And finally, some ghee all over the biryani once again to keep it nice and moist. So the biryani is layered nicely now. I need to cook it, light a flame and put my biryani that I've layered in this vessel, in this pan, on top of the flame. Now for the biryani, you actually need to seal the pot. So I've got some dough. Now this is a simple bread dough or a flour dough. Line this up, make a small little thing, small little string here, and put it on top of the edge of the vessel. Now, the dough that I've applied all across the edges of the pot, I need to cover the lid. After you have covered the lid on the dough, you have sealed the pot. Now what does this do? This actually generates a lot of heat and steam inside. It also keeps the biryani moist. After about 15 minutes, you would see, that's the time required to cook the biryani, you would see the steam kind of coming out. So once you notice the steam coming out of the gaps or the edges of the dough, you would note that the biryani is ready. The chicken that was raw would be cooked and the rice that is partly cooked would also be cooked. That's the trick of a biryani, plain and simple, all together. This is the way 
probably the moguls used to make after about 15 minutes here now as you see the steam is coming out i would lower the flame and cook for another 5 to 8 minutes so that the entire biryani the chicken and the rice get cooked further this would also help me from the chicken and the rice not getting burnt from down if you want at this point of time you can also put a tawa which is like a griddle plate below this if you don't have a griddle plate never mind lower the flame and keep cooking for about 5 to 8 minutes the biryani is almost now 20 minutes on the flame it looks like it's ready but you need to check it so i have to off the flame remove the lid now after removing the dough and the lid you need to carefully check the biryani with a ladle which is like a spatula like this you need to start from the edge of the vessel and just lift it up voila the biryani is nice and moist the chicken looks cooked yes the chicken is cooked it usually gets this little burnt flavor also because the biryani is directly on the flame the chicken gets little brown and it's nice you know it gets the roasted feel so my biryani is ready biryani when you cook at home i'm sure it envies your neighbor because the flavor of this entire biryani spreads out across to your neighbors too and all your people around where you live would know that today you have cooked a biryani it's so flavorful so to serve i've got a little bowl here you see the nice colors of rice rice is absolutely nice and separate hot piping biryani is now ready you can garnish this with mint leaf serve it with yogurt of your choice which could be a mixed vegetable raita or a cucumber raita or traditionally the mirchika salad if you know of it let me taste the biryani for you it's quite interesting because you need to check for salt let me check the salt here the balance is perfect of salt the garam masala flavors the moistness that is created by the ghee also just the right kind of biryani i would like it just for you